The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Previously on The Ben Heck Show. We got a client coming in in five minutes. Who's gonna help me pick up? These last four minutes have been the most difficult of my life. I'm not a Nerf janitor. I wonder if Ben's finished that dark collecting robot for me yet. Cool. Oh, who's calling me? Ryan. Hey Ryan, what's up? No, we don't quite have the dark collecting Roomba Nerf robot ready yet. Well, it still needs a larger chamber to hold the darts in. It needs some extra mechanical stuff at the bottom to avoid sticking itself on darts. And also, the computer vision isn't working yet. But I think it's something we can do in the course of this episode. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspire designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bad them hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to be finishing up the iRobot Create 2 based project that we started a few weeks ago. In previous episodes, we learned how to communicate with the Roomba. Then in part two, we made a custom brush that would suck up Nerf darts to clean up after a battle. And in today's episode, we're gonna finish things off. First, by adding cow catchers to help guide the darts into the brushes. Then we're gonna build a bigger collection bin to hold many darts. Also, the bigger the bin is, the less chance of the darts falling back out is. Then we're gonna try using the Pixie Cam to locate darts. The Pixie Cam is a kickstarted color-based image sensing camera that we got off Kickstarter a few years ago. And we used it on our auto tracking camera. We're gonna try it here to try to find the colored darts. Then we're gonna write code for dart collection. Basically the Roomba will look around. If it sees a colored dart, it'll drive over to it, suck it up, and then look for some more. And then if enough time passes, it'll give up and go back to its charging station. Let's get started. Our super scooper seems to work pretty well. So I'm gonna add a few more things to the Roomba before I rebuild this into something nice. One thing I want is a cow catcher type thing in front of the uh, front wheel here so that darts will get pushed to the side of it rather than roll over it because this wheel is not really meant to roll over things. I pr this probably wouldn't even roll over a cat. Uh, yeah, so I made two different types. I made a curved cow catcher and a pointed cow catcher. If you don't know, a cow catcher is that thing that they would have in front of trains in the Old West that like, great, they kind of look like this actually. So the thing in front of trains in the Old West that looked like this was called the cow catcher in case there was a cow. And they'd be like I'm just gonna put a little bit of super glue on just to test. Uh, it also has to be compatible with the docking station so it can't impede the docking procedure. Which also means we can just drive directly at darts. So the idea is it'll push the dart aside so it doesn't get stuck under the front wheel. And then we'll have some more channels that will guide it back in to hit the brushes. All right, so let's just do a test to make sure that it can still auto dock. I wouldn't let my dog eat that. I think it needs, I, I actually think it's the fact that the back of it's not weighted down enough. Let's put some stuff on it. We don't have any cats to put on it, so what's something? I'm gonna make some marks as to where the docking station goes when this is in place. Uh, it doesn't go this far, but it could go this far, so I'm gonna make mark it here. So this will be used to just help me add whatever else I'm gonna add. So we have to keep this area clear. So if the dart hits the cow catcher and goes like here, we also wanna to try to keep it away from the wheels. There's an indentation here, which we'll have to account for. So I would say probably about a 22 degree angle from there 
So what I want to do here is create a path like that. So the cow catcher will split it and keep it from hitting the wheel. And then these paths will direct it toward the kickers and also avoid these wheels. I mean, these wheels will go over a dart easily, but better just not to go over the dart. Also, instead of just having straight pieces, I think we might want to bend them a little bit. So if it rotates and hits a dart, it also kind of keeps it away from the wheel. It's better for this machine to push darts away from it and not collect them than for the darts to get stuck. Because remember, this thing is only meant to drive over dirt. Unless you have a really dirty house. They got clumps of dirt. The room is like, gives up. But I think if you have a house filled with like golf ball sized pieces of dirt, you probably don't have a Roomba anyway. I printed some pieces for the bottom. Uh, this piece will fit here. And this piece has a little bit of a extra bump to it because we've got the optional brush attachment that would go here. So we wanna make sure we fill in this space a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna glue these in place and then test them out. Sir, there's a bunch of darts in our path. Drive over all of them. But every man in this division will die. I don't care. I think I need to up the kicker speed. 170 forward. I got all six, cool. Well, if you believe in string theory, it is possible that in some universe, the dart battle ended with all the darts on end. Ah! Okay, so the cow catchers look like they're working well. Uh, what I'm gonna work on next is making a better um, dart collection system for the back. It's time for a tech timeout. I use my MakerBot all the time, but it has a lot of wear and tear. Here are the original plastic arms that held the print bed. As you can see, over time, they have warped a good deal. I'm pretty sure they weren't made this way. So there's a place called BC Technological Solutions where you can actually order aluminum reconstructions of these arms for your MakerBot. It costs about $150, but you know, it's milled aluminum, you know, it's not cheap. So I bought a pair and then I installed it onto my MakerBot. I also created a custom new acrylic base for this center wood portion, so that would stay super stiff as well. Now I've reinstalled it onto my MakerBot, and I'm doing some test prints, and now it should keep this very, very flat. Of course, now the thing that will probably bend is the aluminum heat plate itself, but uh, hey, at least it's a good base to start from. The arms are now super flat and straight, so now my MakerBot will go for another thousand hours. I'm going to use engraving plastic and some funky foam to create an extended cartridge for the Roomba's dart collector. I'm also putting 3D printed lips on it so the darts can easily jump up into the collector but not necessarily roll out of the collector. Okay, well this is what I came up with. It sticks out the back of the Roomba like that. It has room for a lot of darts. This is the scoop lip so the brush will kick the darts up into it like this. And this will actually ride pretty low to the ground. And this lip here is kind of like a one-way gate so the darts can't roll back out. There's also a slight uh, slant here so the darts will go in and then roll down. You know, obviously they can't roll uphill very well. So this has all been screwed and glued together, but it should go back into the Roomba like a normal cartridge. Yay! For the button here, I made a few 3D printed assemblies that would hold the spring in place, firmly allowing you to press in on it and open up the dust collector in the original way. Obviously, a lot of this has been removed, but it seems like it's pretty solid. So what we need to do, if we're gonna use the Pixie on the Roomba so that it can see the darts, is we need to assign the darts as color signatures in the 
Pixie. So we got this program here called uh, Pixiemon by the developers of the Pixie. First thing I did was I went in, I turned on the auto exposure correction, auto white balance, and auto white balance on power up. And I'll come over to actions. I can either do set signature one through the menu, or I can do it through this button. And I kind of like doing it through the button here because I can get some interesting feedback. And as I bring the dart close to the pixie, it recognizes the, the colors that I want it to capture as the signature. And I can push the button again. And now the dart is the color signature. What I really want to see here is how far can the pixie see? Let me measure this. It's going about 20 inches, 19 inches before it starts having a little, little trouble seeing. So it seems like the pixie might have a little, be a little nearsighted. But I have a little bit of code here. I got a lot of this code from the, an Adafruit project. But um, I got a pan and tilt mechanism here. We may not really even need the pan and tilt on the Roomba. It can just kind of like turn left and right. But for now, I got the pan and tilt on there. And what it will do is if there's a search algorithm where it'll look for a signature, it'll pan left, right, up and down. And then if it sees it, it'll turn the entire Roomba towards the dart and then go towards it. Here's my flow chart for programming the Roomba. We start out rotating around looking for darts. If we see a dart with the camera, we drive over it and then we continue to rotate. If we don't see any darts, we keep rotating. If we rotate 360 degrees twice, we say, okay, there's nothing here. So we count how many failed cycles we've had. If it's four, then we give up and go back to base. If we haven't had four failed cycles, we move five feet forward or basically we move someplace and then we start a rotational search again. Felix and I are experimenting with getting the Roomba to follow colored darts. It sort of works, but the distancing isn't very good. The pixie cam just doesn't have enough resolution. And some dark colors, such as blue, barely register at all. Because of the camera's limited resolution and the size of the darts, along with their desaturated color palette, we realize the effective viewing distance is only about two feet. So we have, at best, two feet of dart detection with this camera's resolution. Mm -hmm. And it's not picking up the blue darts at all. So this thing is pretty nearsighted. Yeah. Two feet, is that really that much better than the Roomba just wandering around randomly looking for darts like it normally would in a cleaning cycle? Not necessarily. Why don't we just do a test? Like, we'll t have the Roomba work in its normal fashion and see if the things we've added to it already are enough to help it pick up darts. Yeah. We're using Sintra and Foam Core to create a controlled environment in which to test the Roomba. We're adding walls so it can escape. Are you not entertained? We've assembled this arena to test the Roomba in, so we're just going to do the normal cleaning cycle, but with our mechanical attachments. Yeah. All right, fire it up. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Is that like when a truck backs up and it makes that beeping noise? It uh, doesn't know that it has a big butt now, so it can't rotate the way it did before. But you know, in reality, the Roomba would have to deal with that problem every day. Yeah, I think that may be messing up its ability to keep track of where it is. Yeah, it thinks it's rotated 180 degrees, but it hasn't. I wonder what the search routine is for this. I have to think that it does some basic estimation of what the room is shaped like. As long as it doesn't hit any obstacles, I mean, it knows how far it's moved forward. And you remember, it has like, what, six infrared sensors in the front, so who knows, maybe it's creating a map in memory. Let's take, awesome. a look, let's take a look and see how full it is. Well, it seems like it works pretty well just as is. Yeah. And it was yeah. really a mechanical solution more than anything. We could spend a bunch of time trying to make it overly complicated with image detection, or we could just take it to backflip and get the job done. I hear there's a Nerf war going on right now. Come on, guys. This is so much fun, but it's a big mess, and I'm gonna have to clean it up later, guys. You know nothing, Jon Snow! But my name is Jeff! Get by the fruit of the Roomba. Ben, Ben, you're here, it's here, awesome. Now you can clean up. I'm sorry, they, they always do that. They should teach me how, that's pretty impressive. We're here at Backflip Films with Ryan, who had the original idea to make something to clean up Nerf darts after a battle. 
Yeah, so we we have these nerf battles quite frequently, and right. it's kind of annoying to, to always be picking up all these darts. Couldn't you just not have the battles? Like <laughs> maybe have like a UN convention to no, no, we, farewell we have to. to foam arms? It's in our international charter. We knew that you could come up with a solution though um, to automatically clean these up for us. So what'd you come up with? Well, we have the iRobot Crate 2 kit which is a basically a Roomba that is used for education and testing purposes. And we've heavily modified it so we can actually pick up darts. Oh wow. Instead of dirt. So is that different than a regular Roomba? We're actually using the same code. We tried using image sensing to find things, but we didn't really have the time to finish that. And these darts are kind of small and a lot of the colors just don't pick up very well, especially the blue, which apparently is most of your darts. Mm. Let's fire this thing up. Roomba, do what must be done. <laughs> yeah! Oh, that's awesome. What? Don't hit me! Roomba, Look at clean that. up the city! Oh, oh. Is it learning where I'm standing? So I think so. If I just stay here forever, it'll, it'll always It probably know. has built-in cat detection, oh, too. Oh. Look at it go. See that little uh, black triangle in the front of it? Oh, no. We put cow catchers on no, no. it, so the darts <laughs> will... <laughs> Oh. It's trying to clean you, Ryan. <laughs> it sees all nice. humans as a dirty threat, not Look just darts. That. I'm okay with this amount of work, throwing darts in the in the path of the Roomba. Yeah. I don't mind that. Well, we got an error that said that it was full of darts. Let's see how many are in the collector. Many. Nice. Wait, that's, that was the opposite. That was the... I'm, I'm giving it work to do. I'm keeping it employed. <laughs> Here you go, Ryan, have fun. Awesome, well thank you so much for making this for us, but uh, could you help us clean up the mess you just made? For this episode's challenge, we experimented with the iRobot Create 2 kit. Our goal is to make a robot helper that could pick up small toys like Legos or Nerf darts. In part one, we learned how to talk with the Roomba over a serial connection. In part two, we created custom brushes to help load Nerf darts. And in part three, we built dart guides in a custom collection chamber. We had planned to use a pixie cam in part three to locate darts on the floor based off color, but we found the stock Roomba cleaning code worked perfectly well as is. In this aspect, I feel we met the challenge of collecting darts, that was our goal, even though it didn't utilize the iRobot Create 2 kit to its fullest potential. Looking back, we should have spent more time on the computer vision portion, preferably using a higher resolution camera and a processor like the Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone. What approach would you have taken with this project? Have you ever modified a home appliance before? Let us know in the Element 14 community where you can also keep track of our upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Our goal was to make a robot helper that didn't suck. <laughs> This vision camera is cool and all. Vision camera is redundant. <laughs> We've assembled this arena. <laughs> it would be the undead I, I, Zombie Roomba. <laughs> Picks up all the blood and brains. We decided that the new round robot in Star Wars is gonna be like the Jar Jar Binks of robots. That's my social security check, Chewie. <laughs> Bring it over here. I'm not a jerk Daninner after all. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> what? Janitor's a jerk. I'm not a jerk janitor. <laughs> That's when we knew Ryan had brain cancer. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.